Hooked up. You have to want to do it. It isn't a job that you come and you look at it as a job. In your, in your other job, it's a skill that you acquire. You have your family life, okay, but your job, this fish smoking job, must be important to you. And you must even go at home and you think how to improve the quality of the fish. My name is Aftabedin Raymond. I am the smoker and I'm responsible for the hot smoke fish at Acme Smoke Fish Company. Well now, we just, we just wait. I've been a fish smoker from 1984 until now, uh, 27 years. Presently I'm 65, I'll be 66 next year. I, I haven't smoked fish anywhere else. The back here is the generators that I give the smoke into the oven to give the fish the color. And the taste. And the taste. Each oven will take per day about 5,000 pounds of fish. Well, most of the fish we do is white fish. I would say the factory hot smoking would do between 15 and 20,000 pounds a day. We do brook trout, whiting, ciscos, chubs, salad fish, white fish, salad fish, and salmon different variety of fish. Acme is unique in that we do both cold smoking and hot smoking, and I'd say by volume it's about 50-50. Um, probably we sell a lot more cold smoked salmon, uh, but, but our, our hot smoke operation side of the business is definitely on the uh, rise. I'm Peter Wojcik, I'm assistant smoker in the hot smoke department at Acme Smoke Fish. I come in at noon and I work uh, just before midnight, somewhere in there. Like, they're, they're nice. Everybody comes in, hangs the fish, guts the fish. They're all gone by three, and then it's, it's just me and Raymond smoking fish. You have to pay attention to every little detail because in this smoking the fish, every little detail counts. Smoking fish is like by far the hardest thing to smoke. It's, it's a, a, like a softer meat. It's a, a more elegant meat almost. And, uh, you, have, you can't cook it too fast. You have to like slowly bring temperatures up so the meat doesn't fall apart or, thing, or it doesn't weigh it down or bubble from the inside or things like that. I put it down as three steps or in a shortcut you can say, dry it, smoke it, cook them. And that's it. These are the probes. These are the probes to tell you the temperature inside the fish to, make, to tell you how it's cooking and when it's cooked. Well, the process with these type of fish, you have to dry it first, get it dry, but not too dry. You have to know, get the feel of it, that you don't dry it too much. And then you, when it's properly dried, you smoke it. You add smoke to it to give it a nice color. And after you feel that you've given it enough smoke to have a good color, then you have to cook it. But you have to take care of the drying process, which is, to me, the more important and maybe the more technical part in, in, in the process to get a fish right. It, it, it has to be dried the proper way. You have to dry it in a way where there is still some moisture on it so that the smoke can adhere to the skin. Well, that, that probe, right now, at the moment, is saying 71 degrees in the fish, internal probe. This is gonna cook until you reach 145 degrees, then the fish is cooked. If you go over 145, the fish is overcooked. If you go below 140, 145, the fish will be raw. Yeah, the most nerve-wracking point of the whole thing is 
is you put the fish in and you dry it, and then when you think it's at the right point of dryness, then you put it in, then you have to be like, I'm putting it in the smoke, and then once you put it in the smoke, that's when you're committed, and, and then once, once it's out of smoke, you open it, you're like, whew, like, like that worked? <laughs> or, oh man, now I gotta try and do something about that. Yeah, I enjoy most when the fish, is, the, the, the product is finished and it comes out nice. That's what I enjoy most. Okay, you can tell the fish is well cooked. The insides are nice and golden brown. The outside, if you feel it, it has the moisture and it will have the taste. When a fish is overcooked, it dry, it gets dry all around the skin. But this now is perfectly done. That is what we look for. If you feel it, there's the moisture in it. If you feel it, there's nice moisture and it should be tasty. I, I do, I, I see Raymond as like my, as my Jedi Master, my Yoda on the pad one. <laughs> There's no one like him really left in the industry. And um, it's, it's, I guess, if, if when you talk about what separates great athletes from good, good athletes, it's those intangibles. And that's what he's got. He's got the intangibles. He, he knows the manual by, by hand, but he also knows the adjustments that you need to make on the, the fly to deliver that great tasting smoked, smoked fish. I would like to continue doing this job, continue doing it, but physically, getting on in age now, uh, you have your aches and pains, and it needs a younger person now. Well, it's important to me because uh, whatever I try to do, I try to give my best and make every effort to give it. Sometimes it may, may not be the best, but I give it, I give it all I have. I don't know, it's like all the old kung fu movies, like there's always the master. Right now Raymond's that old, that old kung fu guy with the big beard, but in a year it'll be me being the master. <laughs> I'm Tom Colicchio. There you go. <laughs> now I'm in the food business. My true passion is fishing. I've been invited to go sport fishing with Tom. What kind of fish are we going to catch in this New York Harbor is what I'm wondering. You're not going to believe why I'm here today. I want to catch a big one. Put me in the ring with a good one, dude. I'm going to see if I can stuff it. <laughs> <laughs> and mount it on our wall. <laughs> Chefs are nuts and they are partiers. <laughs>